Queso Frito lovers, this is Ben Ramos bringing you another mukbang from my palatial home here in the Northwest Bronx. The Bronx is the home of hip hop and salsa. I am here with a delicious, very American style meal. I've got some meatloaf mashed potatoes and some ears of corn. Mi gente, I hope you are doing well. I want to give a shout out to all of my new sofrito lovers, my new subbies. Como esta? Bienvenido, mucho amor. Love you guys. Thank you for being on board. You know the drill. I'm gonna bring you a couple of mukbangs. I haven't done a tasting video in a while. Tasting videos are when I taste you know, food that's new to me or maybe like a, a, a particular like product, like a new type of cereal or something. Check this out, some homemade mashed potatoes and meatloaf. I didn't cook this, my my roommate did. Um, yeah, so expect a couple of mukbangs a week and maybe even a, a quick, you know, five to 10 minute tasting video de vez en cuando, buen provecho, mira esto. Mm. 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 My roommate can cook. I don't give him enough credit. He can, he puts his foot in it. A nice, simple skillet meatloaf. It's not one of those meatloafs that you make in the oven. Our oven here in, in the Bronx doesn't work. So he does it on a skillet. Typical corn, homemade mashed potatoes. Like I said, he puts his foot in it. He knows what he's doing. I'm stretching because I'm getting some Diet Sierra Mist. I am excited, mi gente. I am totally excited. Tonight, Thursday, March 19th, is the premiere of season... Uh, <laughs> I can't speak. The premiere of season 17 of Top Chef. I am a huge, huge, huge Top Chef fan. <clears throat> I loves me some Top Chef uh, with that sexy, sexy Padma Lakshmi. Oh my God, that woman is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, the super sexy, my 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 boyfriend, my other boyfriend. Well, David is my other boyfriend, uh, Chef Tom. I love Chef Tom Caligia. <laughs> David is gonna hear this and he's gonna get pissed. But yeah, Chef Tom was my chef celebrity love interest way before I ever met David Beta. Sorry, Bear, I love you. You always be my bear bear. But um, Chef Tom, God, I love Tom Caligio. Oh God, he's so cute and he's so sexy and sophisticated and smart and he cooks. And David Beta right now is beside himself with anger because <laughs> he does not want me acknowledging uh, Chef Tom. But I am excited because I love Top Chef. I'm a foodie. Those of you who don't, who are new, I just don't do, mukbangs are part of my appreciation of food. I'm a huge foodie. I write about food, I read about food, I post about food. And Top Chef is one of the few food-oriented shows that I like. Mm. Mm. And tonight at 10 o'clock on Bravo, See, season 17 premieres. Listen, it's kind of weird because I love I love food shows, but not all types of food shows. Like This is going to sound real weird, but Food Network and even the Cooking Network, some of the shows that are on there are kind of whack. And I don't like some of the personalities of the hosts. And I've never was a big fan of like Iron Chef and all that. I don't know. Some of those cooking shows I found really whack. I gave Top Chef a try, just like I gave all those other shows. Now, not to say that I hate all the shows on Food Network or Cooking Channel, because it's not true. There's a couple of shows here and there that I think are great. I have to have a certain type of host, a certain type of vibe. Mm. Mm. I have to have a certain type of host vibe and energy for me to enjoy certain food shows. There's a lot of food channel, cooking channel shows that like the people that are involved are so annoying and stupid. Top Chef, I love it. It's a competition. It's got enough drama, but it's not all about the drama. It's all about the food. The, the chef testants, like they call them. 
they really know how to pick a really interesting group of people that are smart, intelligent, all about the food, professional, real cool. You know, it's not about interpersonal drama. Nobody there is fighting. Nobody's being ratchet. No one's being... It, it's not like, you know, love, you know, it's not like some of these other reality shows like Love and Hip Hop or Basketball Wives. None of that happens. But it's a great competition. And it's a great, you know, you, you build these relationships with people. You get to know these amazing stories of these people and how they got involved in food. Mm. Simple corn. Simple corn. You boil it, put a little bit of salt. I'm not big into huge amounts of butter. I'm not big into putting mayonnaise on it like a lot of other Latinos do. I don't need 50 pounds of salt, pepper, and hot spice. I don't. Give me some nice salted corn and I'm good. Mm. But I digress. I love the show. I think it's really cool. This season, I purposefully make sure since it's one of my favorite shows that I don't read teasers, I don't read spoilers. I may see a trailer de vez en cuando, but I try not to learn anything about what is happening. We live in a culture now where anytime anything is gonna premiere, forget about it. With all the teasers and all the spoilers and all that, you already know what happens the entire season before you even watch the first show. Top Chef is one of those shows where I want to stay in the total blank. The only thing I wanna see is when I see the commercial teaser, the, the PSA for it, I'll watch that, but I won't go online and say, who's on season 17 and what's happened? None of that. I don't wanna know anything. I wanna experience it fresh. The one thing I did see from the commercials is that this is gonna be a season that's like an all-star season where they're bringing nothing but chefs from the past to compete against each other. Because when I've seen the commercials, it's just all chefs that I've seen before from different seasons. So that much I know, but I don't know who's gonna win. I don't know who's being eliminated first. I don't know any of those details. I so keep myself on the blind. Anytime I see anything online, I get an email, anything that's top chef related for this season, delete, don't look at. I want it totally, totally fresh. I practice a lot of discipline when it comes to that. Because I want everything to be... Same thing I do kind of like with RuPaul's Drag Race. I've started like... I avoid all the, the drama channels. I avoid all the teasers, all the thousands of shows, YouTube shows and channels that are... on. Um, no, I, I don't want to know who's getting kicked out. I don't know who's got drama with who. I just want to experience it. So tonight for me is a huge night. 10 o'clock at um, Bravo. Top Chef season 17. I'm going to see my husband, my love of my life, Chef Tom Calicchio. David Beta is David Beta is so hot right now. He's burning right now hearing me say. <laughs> mm. The meatloaf and mashed potatoes and corn. So delicious. You can't get any more Americano than this. Esto es puro Americano. This is the United States of America right here on my, at least from my perspective. You know, I grew up in a very Puerto Rican home. So even though my mother would make mashed potatoes, it'd be like mashed potatoes, you know, and I don't know, like a fried chuleta filled with adobo or something, you know, it would be something very Puerto Rican-y. This, this to me is like very classic American, meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm choking right in front of you. Mm. I'm excited. It's like eight something o'clock, so in about two hours. I'm sorry. I know I'm like rambling on about Top Chef, but I can't wait. I can't wait to see the season. Mmm. Many seasons ago, there was this young chef that was on there and I kept looking at her and I kept saying, God, why do I know her? Why, how and why do I know her? Wasn't from the professional world. It wasn't from college. And then it hit me that this girl was a girl that I went to high school with. 
I forgot her name now. She was on Top Chef, I think, once or twice. She was one of those people that on a different season, they asked her to come back on or something like that. I forgot her name right now, but I could not believe that this girl, and I barely knew her in high school. I went to a huge high school with like, like over a thousand kids. So, and my graduating class was more than 500 people. I went to a really big school in New York City, a public school, Brooklyn Tech. It was a school for the gifted and, you know. Um, getting back to the point, I was like, I know this girl, I know this girl. And when it dawned on me, I was like, did I go to high school with her? And then I remember, Jamie, her name was Jamie. She was Chef Jamie something. And I went to my yearbook and I was like, you know what? She was an aerospace or aeronautics engineering major. My, my high school was very big on engineering. I was a, a biochemistry engineer. I was gonna be a doctor up until I realized I was a writer and an artist. But I knew she was a, like in aerospace engineering or aeronautics and I looked up in the yearbook, I looked up that section and I saw her and I was literally like telling everyone, I know that girl, I know that chef. I mean, I hadn't spoken to her in like maybe 20 something. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, when we were in high school, the, you know, it was probably one of those things where it was an acquaintanceship. Like I saw her, she was, she had friends that were friends of mine and it'd be like, hey, what's up? And it was like, it was good. And it was like that. It wasn't like she and I were friends, but it was amazing to be like, wow, I went to high school with a chef tested. And also, you know, how, you know, car uh, careers and you know, asp uh, future aspirations, professional aspirations change. I mean, she was an aerospace engineering major. I was a biomedical major. And, you know, I ended up being a journalist and working a nonprofit. And she became some big time chef that was so good. She was able to get on Top Chef twice. Um, so it was kind of really cool. So. Oh, and many years ago, there was a chef, uh, a chef testant that was from Puerto Rico. Again, I forget these guys' names. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't really that famous. He wasn't on the show for long. I think he got eliminated like third or fourth, but he was Boricua, Puerto Rican. And it turned out that he was a cousin of a friend of mine, of a friend of mine in Puerto Rico, Rosalia. Um, Rosalia, I forgot his name then, but Rosalia, one time she saw me writing something, I think online about how much I was like, oh, I'm proud Boricua. Proud of the Boricua chef. I was on the early days of Facebook or whatever. And she was like, yo, ese primo hermano mío. Like, that's my first cousin. I was like, oh my God. Ah, I'm like one one step away. And the, again, the Boricua chef, he was real cool. He was from directly from Puerto Rico, from the island. And my friend Rosalia was born and raised in, in New York City. But she, at that time, I think she was, I think she was living in Florida or whatever. Getting back to the point, she was, you know, it was kind of cool. I was like, all right, a Boricua chef. I'm one step away from him. And so that's another reason why I dig Top Chef. I have like these personal links. Okay. Mi gente. I'm excited. I'm, uh, I know I'm being a total fanboy right now. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, look at this food. Mmm. Mm. Oh my God, I need to eat. I'm hungry. Working from home these days, guys, working from home. I hope everyone is being safe and smart and making good choices. Stay away from people, don't cough, don't sneeze. If you start feeling weird, do what you gotta do. That's all I wanna say about that stuff. Mm. Doing good, you guys. Trying to use my, remember how I did the mukbang, talking about how I'm gonna be using my free time wisely? I already started doing that. Started doing some decluttering here in the in my room. I hit the closet, started going through a couple of boxes of memories. It's kind of amazing when you go, I, I'm a collector. I, I like to keep mementos from my life. When I think I experience something or go somewhere and do something that I think I always wanna keep a keepsake of it, not everything is worth remembering in my opinion <laughs> but i always try to put away a little keepsake 
of significant moments in my life or significant trips or things that I think are worth remembering. And I put them away in these boxes and I started opening up a box, I cleaned it off and I started going through it with the intent of like, let me look through this and maybe some stuff needs to get thrown out. And I started going through all of these old pictures and old school certificates and and things from from when I first started working at the agency I'm working at now and some stuff that I got from other jobs and other projects and events and life moments and it started going through all the mementos and I was basically like, yeah, there's nothing here that I'm going to throw out. I went through the box again with the intent of Mary Kondoing thing. Like, do I really need this? Okay, I love you. Bye. No, it was... I couldn't do that. There was nothing there that I could throw out. I was going to go through a second box, but then I was like, eh. I was already so nostalgic and so moved and happy and pensive about the things that I was looking at. Also thinking about seeing like... In the last 15 years, there's been a lot of people who have passed on. People that were political mentors and teachers and all that. And I was looking at certain things and seeing, you know, remembrances and funeral stuff. And made me think about like, wow, it's been this long since this person died. And wow, this amazing figure in my life. It's going to be 15 years this year that they, you know, just going through that. And I think that made me made it hard for me to lose and want to throw anything out. It's really good to go through memory lane. Not through, to go down memory lane. Kind of remember the special people. So it was dope. Full intention of throwing things out and sorting through things. And I realized I kept all these things for a reason. So... Eh, I didn't feel like throwing anything out, but I did, you know, I cleaned up some stuff and moved some things around and reorganized, you know, where certain things went. So it was, it, it wasn't a complete waste. <laughs> okay, mi gente, I love you. I'm going to finish this off camera. Just send you another video. Tonight is the season premiere of season 17 of Top Chef. And for the next couple of weeks, eh, really more like, a month and a half i'm just gonna be religiously on thursday nights at 10 o'clock right there with my weekly date with my chef tom um david beta is angry <laughs> i love you guys como siempre follow me on all my social media sofrito in my soul on facebook twitter and instagram sofrito in my soul.com is my blog i've actually been a pretty good blogger this week i've been blogging every day um Oh, I'm a liar. I didn't post anything today. Okay, Monday through Wednesday, I was good. And tomorrow, I'm going to post something. But um, como siempre, go out there. Go taste for yourself. Go have some culinary adventures. Nos vemos pronto. Mucho amor.